Good evening and welcome to Quotes Today by Live Law. This is your host Urvashi Chahan bringing you the latest updates on the legal front. Dear viewers, on behalf of the entire Live Law team, I wish you a very happy new year. We would like to express our gratitude for your continued trust and viewership. We look forward to bringing you accurate, timely and unbiased legal news coverage this year as well. May it be a year of positive change, empowerment and humaneness for all of us. Starting with an update from the Supreme Court. A PIL has been filed in the Supreme Court challenging a recently passed bill which was also signed into law by the President last week. That is the Chief Election Commissioner and other Election Commissioners Appointment, Conditions of Service and Term of Office Act 2023. The PIL seeks to set aside the Gazette notification of 28th December regarding the same. As you know, the bill faced criticism for being contrary to a March ruling of the Supreme Court, which had mandated inclusion of the Chief Justice of India in the selection process, emphasizing the need for an independent and unbiased committee till the parliament enacted a law. As per the provisions of the new bill, the president appoints the CEC and ECs based on a selection committee's recommendation consisting of the prime minister, a union cabinet minister and the leader of the opposition or leader of the largest opposition party in the Lok Sabha, thus removing the CGI from the selection committee. The PIL filed by regular practicing advocates argues for implementation of an independent and transparent selection system constituting a neutral committee for appointment of a CEC and other election commissioners and the inclusion of the Chief Justice of India in the selection panel. In a related news, let me tell you, Congress leader Jaya Thakur has also approached the Supreme Court challenging the constitutionality of Section 7 and Section 8 of this new Act. She has contested that removal of the Chief Justice of India goes against the constitution as it breaches the principles of a free and a fair election. The Congress leader in her petition has raised apprehensions that the impugned sections would destroy the democracy in our country. A division bench of Justices Sanjeev Khanna and Dipankar Datta today continued hearing special leave petitions against a decision of the Patna High Court delivered to uphold the Bihar government's decision to undertake the caste-based survey. You already know that a division bench of the Patna High Court had rejected the contention that an attempt to collect data on the basis of caste amounted to a census and held the exercise to be perfectly valid. The survey was completed and in October, Bihar government published the data collected from the survey. During the hearing today, the bench questioned the extent to which the government could withhold the breakup of the survey data. The bench said that the legal matter, specifically the accuracy of the High Court judgment, needs to be scrutinized. Meanwhile, it has requested filing of the published survey report before the court. The matter will now be taken up in the week commencing 29th January. Stay tuned with us. In 2014, the Supreme Court in the case of National Legal Services Authority versus Union of India and others had acknowledged transgenders as the third gender. It had stated that absence of a law recognizing transgender individuals as a third gender should not be a basis for discriminating against them in terms of equal opportunities in education and employment. In this regard, a transgender teacher has approached the Supreme Court in a writ petition alleging termination of appointment in two different schools in both Gujarat and state of Uttar Pradesh upon revelation of her gender identity. Today, a bench comprising the CJI Chandrachud and Justices J.B. Pardewala and Manoj Mishra issued notice in the petition and directed it to be served to the Union of India, the state governments and schools in order to seek their response on the matter. The matter will be listed for hearing after four weeks now. Another PIL has been filed before the Supreme Court challenging the three new criminal laws which received the President's assent last month. The laws namely Bharatiya Nyay Sahita, the Bharatiya Nagrik Suraksha Sahita and Bharatiya Sakshya Sahita are set to replace IPC, CRPC and the Indian Evidence Act. 
However, the date from which the provisions of the new laws shall take effect is yet to be notified. The PIL seeks a stay on the implementation of these laws as well as a direction for immediate constitution of an expert committee under chairmanship of a former judge of the Supreme Court to examine the viability of these laws. It claims that the three laws were passed with irregularities and discrepancies, that they were approved without proper parliamentary debate as 141 opposition MPs were suspended at the time emphasizing resource limitations and the effects on legal aid or pro bono work, the PIL suggests that lawyers might encounter difficulties understanding and dealing with these complexities, potentially causing delays and legal uncertainties. It further claims that the changes brought about through the new criminal laws are draconian and seek to establish police state in reality, besides asserting that they violate fundamental rights of the people of India. In another update, the Supreme Court today dismissed an appeal filed by the Delhi Police against order of National Green Tribunal that had denied them permission to construct temporary quarters for personnel over the banks of the Yamuna River. A bench comprising Justices Abhay S. Oak and Ujjal Bhuyan refused to accept the argument of the appellant that NGT had erred in denying the permission. The bench also said that construction could not be allowed and that steps should be taken to protect the environment. Justice Oak also recalled the floods which occurred last year when the river waters reached near the Supreme Court premises also. A Supreme Court bench of Justices Surya Kant and K.V. Vishwanathan today heard a PIL addressing train accidents in India. The PIL calls for immediate setting up of an expert commission headed by a retired judge of the court and consisting of technical members to analyze the current risk and safety parameters in the railway system. It also seeks setting up of an inquiry commission to probe into the Odisha train accident that took place in June last year. During the hearing today, the bench asked the petitioner if any exercise had been undertaken to ascertain the financial implications of implementing the scheme on pan-India level. To which the petitioner replied that the government was running many programs and the financial aspect shall not come in way of ensuring public safety. The bench instructed the Attorney General to inform the court about safety measures in use or planned to prevent train collisions. This includes information about union government's Kavach scheme also. I must tell you, an indigenous automatic train protection system called Kavach was announced by the government in 2022 union budget as part of Atmanirbhar Bharat initiative. It facilitates prevention of accidents by controlling the speed of a train by automatic application of brakes in case the loco pilot fails to do so. Aggrieved by the Delhi High Court's dismissal of its appeal against the tax authority's demand, the news portal News Click has submitted a special leave petition before the Supreme Court. The petition requests an immediate and temporary suspension of both the High Court's decision and the tax demand. The background here is that the respondent tax authorities through orders issued in February and November 2023 reportedly dismissed News Click's request for a stay on the demand while its appeal was pending before the Commissioner of Income Tax against an assessment order dated 30th December 2022. These orders also mandated payment of 20% of the demand amount before reapplying for a stay on the demand. According to the reports, in the assessment order dated 30th December 2022, the assessing officer categorized the receipts of 15.53 crores from Justice and Education Fund as an unexplained cash credit. A demand for 14.8 crores was imposed after disallowing claimed expenses and taxing the receipts at a rate of 60%. News Click, dissatisfied with these orders, approached the Delhi High Court. Unfortunately, the plea was dismissed by the court. It is alleged that thereafter, the Income Tax Department froze News Click's bank accounts from which the entire demand amount of 14.8 crores now appears to have been debited. News Click pleaded that impugned orders are non-speaking and have been passed without considering its contentions on merits, despite the demand raised being high-pitched. 
A bench of justices B.V. Nagratna and Augustine George Massey today issued notice and sought response of the IT department in two weeks. The Supreme Court dismissed a PIL today which was filed against the anti-NEET campaign of the Tamil Nadu state ruling party DMK. DMK has been organizing a signature campaign against national eligibility come entrance test that is NEET. The party argues that the exam has placed significant stress on students and jeopardized their future prospects. The PIL filed against the campaign states that DMK was organizing the signature campaign in schools despite NEET exams having been allowed by the Supreme Court. That school students were being coached against NEET exams and were compelled to sign petitions that do without the permission of their parents. The court, however, did not seem inclined to entertain the petition. The bench of justices Surya Kant and K. V. Vishwanathan said that NEET, a competitive examination, has to be held on pan-India basis and that fortunately, the generation was well informed and would not be affected by such campaigns. The Madras High Court today wondered if the chief minister of a state could pursue a case against the state itself. The curious question arose when the bench of Chief Justice S. V. Ganga Purwala and Justice Bharat Chakrabarti came across a petition filed by the current Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, M. K. Stalin, back in 2014 when he was the treasurer of the DMK party. This case revolves around collapse of an 11-storey building under construction in Chennai in June 2014, which resulted in 61 fatalities and 27 injuries. Then Chief Minister J. J. Lalita formed a special investigation team led by a retired judge of the Madras High Court to investigate the incident. Expressing dissatisfaction with the SIT's investigation, Stalin, who is now the Chief Minister, had approached the court in March 2017 seeking a transfer of the investigation to the CBI. The case has been ongoing since then, with Stalin assuming office as Chief Minister in May 2021. When the matter was taken up today, the court was informed that the matter would have to be withdrawn as the prayer sought did not stand at present. Also that the counsel on record could not carry the case forward. Accordingly, the matter was adjourned for a week for filing of vakalat. Thank you for watching. If you wish to know more details about the cases I mentioned here, you can visit our website at www.livelaw.in. Stay ahead with quick legal updates only on Live Law. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe and support us. You can also support us by donating through the thanks button at the bottom of our videos or consider becoming a member at just 89 rupees per month.